Fictional moms, you guys know the deal, so here we go. It's gonna get progressively weirder too, so buckle up. So yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Here's a test to see if you're a Karen. So if you've ever done any of these six things, then you qualify as a Karen. So good luck. Have you ever asked to speak to a manager? I actually haven't. I'm not that confrontational. Like if an employee gives me a hard time, I'll probably just disregard it. You regularly send your food back. Not regularly, but if I like blatantly get the wrong order, then yes. But if you slightly miscook my steak or something, I'm not gonna cause a scene. Have you ever complained about wearing a mask? Yeah, all the time. Karens are kind of based in this regard. I hate masks, but I'll wear them if I like need to. Do you threaten to call the cops on people? No. I've like never even encountered the cops before. Have you ever said, do you know who I am? Literally never. There's no way people say that unironically. I know like frat guys with like daddy's money say that, but literally so cringe. Do you say this is America? No, not once. Let's see if I'd let these people date my daughter. Absolutely not. He's fumbled Peach like 20 times at this point, so he's not really reliable. No, of course not. Honestly, yeah. But like later versions of Shrek, once he kind of finds himself and cleans up his act. Probably, but too much danger involved, so maybe not. It depends what Spider-Man you're getting. Like Tom Holland, yes. Andrew Garfield. Same sort of deal. I mean, at least he's financially well off, so some problems could be mitigated. No. He's miserable. Can't be having that energy at like Thanksgiving. Yeah, for sure. I think Pooh's a sweetheart. He'd treat her really well. I don't think he'd be going for my daughter. If you're watching this, then you probably don't know how to use the bathroom, so let me go ahead and teach you. So do you put the toilet seat up when you pee? I've never understood this one. Maybe if you're a guy with like zero precision, you have to put the seat up to expand the radius, but generally speaking, no. Just aim and get better. Over or under for the toilet paper? This is definitively over. Under's weird, like why do you want to struggle when you're getting your toilet paper? Do you wash your hands after using the bathroom? Obviously. This is a PSA, by the way, to girls, and I guess guys too. Never touch a guy's hand. Guys are so nasty. They'll go in the bathroom, take a shit, and just walk out without cleaning their hands. And if you do do that, unfollow me right now, because that's nasty. Toilet paper or bidet? Bidet. I was toilet paper gang my entire life, and recently I discovered the bidet, and I'll never go back. It just logically makes sense to properly sanitize the area. Uh, and then sitting or standing to wipe. Generally seated, but sometimes I'll be like half standing. It all just kind of depends. So what do you guys think? Here's a test to see if you're privileged. So if you say yes to more than half of these questions, then apparently you're super privileged. So let's see. Are you white? This should be fun, but no. Are you a man? Yeah, I am. Do you feel comfortable in your gender? Yes. Are you physically attractive? No. Are you straight? Yes. Did you graduate high school? Yes. Have you traveled internationally? Yes. Have you always lived above the poverty line? No, definitely not. Do you work in a salary job? No. Can you walk home without fearing for your life? Depends. You've never been bullied? Yeah, true. And finally, are you happy? Yes, very. I guess I'm privileged. How about you guys? How rare do you actually think you are? Well, let's see. So the rarest eye color is green and only 2% of people have it. Blue is pretty rare too at about 8%. The rarest zodiac sign is Capricorn, so if your birthday falls from December 22nd to January 19th, then you fall within this range. Red hair is the most unique with only 1% of the population having it, although naturally blonde people make up just 2% of the population. Only 12% of people worldwide are over 6 feet tall, and if you're a girl, that drops to under 1%. Just 3% of people consider black to be their favorite color, and purple and orange are pretty rare too at around 4%. If you're left-handed, then you're part of an elite group of just 10% of people, and then the rarest personality type is INFJ, which only 2% of people have. So let me know if you have any of these rare characteristics. Have you ever wondered what certain random things are called? Probably not, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. So your pinky or little finger is actually called the minimus, and while we're talking fingers, the little white crescent thing on the bottom of your fingernail is actually called the lunula. 
When you see this symbol, you may think either hashtag or pound sign, but it's actually called an octothorpe. When you brush your teeth and put that dab of toothpaste on your brush, that's actually called a nurdle. And if you grab coffee in the morning and put on that little cardboard sleeve, you're utilizing a zarf. If you've ever put a condiment in one of these contraptions, you're using a souffle cup, and that foam at the top of the beer is called barm. And so finally, that little table on top of the pizza that sorts of saves it from moving around is just called a pizza saver. Pretty cool, right? Apparently everybody pronounces these words differently, so let's see if we agree on any of them. That's egg. I guess you could say egg if you're from like the south. Vase. Don't say vase. Vase is so pretentious. It's vase. Oil. I think people from the south say like oil or something. Uh, Oregon. I used to say Oregon. Somebody corrected me. This is bagel. Don't know what the alternative is there. Mayonnaise. I know some people are like mayonnaise in like their southern accents. Adult. This is not adult. It's adult. Every single time. This is almond. Not almond. Almond. All would have two L's. This is Caribbean. Although I say Pirates of the Caribbean if I'm talking about the movie. And then finally, etc. Not etc. Let's see if you're an ethical person. So we're going to look at five different ethics-based situations and you just have to think about what you do in each of them. So here we go. So would you return the shopping cart? Yes, always, and this isn't even a question. I don't get people who refuse to do so. The key to a functioning society is people putting away that cart. Only 58% return, all right. Would you cheat on a test? Yeah, I mean, this might be unpopular, but I don't think cheating on a test is bad, especially when they put so much weight on grades, like just do what you have to do, who cares? 95% of people agree, I didn't think it'd be that high. Do you recycle? Yeah, I mean, I don't get the inconvenience of that. Only 32%. Okay, probably because of China and India. Is drunk driving ever justified? No. You should never be driving over 0.08 or texting for that matter. So definitely don't do that. 46% of people have done it. Okay, let's get that number down. Would you return extra change? So this depends. If it's a corporation with like big pockets, then no. But if it's like a local mom and pop shop, then I'd probably give it back. 40% return. All right, what do you guys think? How average is your face? Well, above me, I'll see what the average person looks like across different countries so you can compare. So what scientists did is they took the faces of thousands of people across different cultures and then they averaged them out into a sketch so you could see what the typical person would look like. It's actually pretty trippy because I swear I've seen some of these people before. And I imagine it's really weird if you're watching this and you see somebody who looks exactly like you. Which statistically speaking is probably going to happen to somebody. But yeah, here's the Americans now. And then finally, the Argentinians. So pretty cool, right? I'm gonna show you a fictional couch and we have to guess where it's from, so let's do this. That's definitely Family Guy. Probably the most iconic cartoon couch, I'd say. Oh, I don't know though. That's uh, SpongeBob's couch. He's got a couple couches though. Doesn't he have the red one, like that meme where he's standing up? Oh my gosh, this is Blue's Clues. Wow, it's super HD. I feel like it used to be pretty pixelated. Is that the Simpsons couch? I'm not used to it from this angle. I think that's from The Simpsons, yeah? Oh my gosh, there's so many good ones. That's iCarly. You see Spencer's robot in the back. No idea what that is. I don't think I've ever seen whatever show this is. Okay, Gumball. I've definitely never seen this couch. What is this? Let's see if you're a gentleman. So we're gonna look at a few different situations from the perspective of a guy and you just have to think about what you do in each of them. And if you're a girl, you can keep scrolling. So who pays the bill on a first date? The guy always. I mean, once you have a few dates under your belt, you can start alternating, but otherwise the guy always should. I don't know how it works if you're gay, so unfortunately can't help you there. Do you hold the door? Yeah, of course. I mean, this is a no-brainer, but within reason. Like, if somebody's 50 feet away, then you don't want to make them do that little awkward jog. Who exits the elevator first? So ladies first, and then if you're near the door, you should sort of like hold your arm out and let everybody else exit. Same with getting into the elevator. Do you curse in public? I think it's like know your audience, so if you're in front of like kids or more conservative people, then no, but otherwise I don't see any issues with it. Uh, and how do you handle disputes? So this is case by case, but I think the right thing to do is just control your own emotions. Obviously avoid fighting if you can and try to de-escalate, but yeah, what do you guys think? If you've ever gone to a restaurant and seen any of these five things, then you better leave immediately. The first we have sticky menus, and usually they look exactly like this. They have that plastic covering. Generally the sign of a dirty establishment if your fingers are adhering to the menu. Too many things on the menu. So yeah, less is more and restaurants should specialize in certain areas. So if you're a restaurant serving mozzarella sticks and sushi, you should be banned by the FDA. 
Dirty bathrooms. I mean, other than the kitchen, the bathroom should be the cleanest place. And I know what you're thinking, Sam, why does this matter? I don't mind a semi-clean bathroom. Well, yeah, but the people who are touching your food are using it as well. Ethnic restaurants with no ethnic people in it. If you're at a Chinese restaurant and there's no Chinese people in there, just leave immediately. It's pretty simple. And then finally, if a restaurant has carpet, don't even bother eating there. You know that's not getting properly cleaned and the smell is probably repugnant. Here are some people who lived a lot more recently than you think. So Rosa Parks died in 2005, which means she was alive for 9-11 and could have watched Shrek if she wanted to. Speaking of movies though, famed silent film actor Charlie Chaplin died in 1977, so he could watch Star Wars or technically met 50 Cent. Also dying in the 70s in 1973 was Pablo Picasso, who many people mistakenly believe lived in the 1500s, but here's actually a colorized photo of him. Princess Diana and Mother Teresa died just days apart in 1997, and this one isn't about their deaths, but it's pretty crazy. Martin Luther King and Anne Frank were born in the same exact year in 1929. And as a bonus, woolly mammoths were still around the same time the Egyptians built the pyramids. I had to double check that one, but it's absolutely true. Pretty crazy, right? These are the most overrated foods of all time, so here we go. First up, we have frosted sugar cookies. Yeah, I mean, you might as well scoop raw sugar directly into your mouth. The taste profile isn't even attractive, because half the time they end up tasting chalky or like half-baked, so I don't get the rave over those. American cheese, yeah, I mean, this tastes like chemicals and plastic. It actually has no true flavor, like every other cheese is better than American cheese, so I don't get why anybody would ever order it, especially on a burger. Iceberg lettuce, yeah, I mean this is 2022. We have spinach, arugula, kale, the list goes on. It has zero nutrients and it's like 99% water, so definitely low tier green. Ground beef, I mean this is probably pretty controversial, but this is easily the worst of the big five meats. It's like the bologna of the group. And I think it's a level one carcinogen, but regardless, it's just super low grade and obviously not like this hearty meat. Anything vegan, yeah, I mean, let's be real here, that food is disgusting. I don't think anybody actually enjoys it for its taste. I've literally never tasted a vegan product and preferred it over its animal counterpart. Let's try to guess the character from their feet, so here we go. Hopefully this doesn't get too weird. Uh, that's Spongebob, pretty easy one. Nice. Uh, maybe Mario? I feel like I've seen those feet before. Luigi, all right. Looks like maybe a deer or something. Lola Bunny. Wow, okay, people are definitely going to rewatch this video. And who's this? It's only one foot. We Fit Trainer. Okay, that makes sense. Peter Griffin, 100%. That's Family Guy. Yeah. Oh, is that Mewtwo? Definitely Mewtwo. Oh, nice. Good. Spider Man. Definitely haven't looked at his feet too much, but the web makes sense. Cool. Then final one. Like, what is that? I have no idea what that could be. Peppa Pig. Okay, I'm not really into that. If you're watching this, then you probably don't know how to shower, so let's evaluate some common shower habits. Do you pee in the shower? Yeah. Don't lie. Everybody does. It's okay. Body wash or bar soap? Body wash. Don't talk to me if you use bar soap. That's nasty. You brush your teeth in the shower? Yes. So much more efficient, and you can be as messy as you want and get like a nice thorough brushing in. Do you bring your phone in the shower? Yeah. Probably when my phone battery's terrible. I'm sure it's like water damaged at this point. Do you shower for more than five minutes? Yeah, I shower for like 30 minutes. I'd go longer if I could. How often do you shower? Once a day, that's the sweet spot. Sometimes twice if I get like really sweaty. You wash your feet? Yes, I hope all you guys do too. And do you poop in the shower? Okay, I'm done with this. So apparently everybody pronounces these words differently, so let's see if you agree with how I say them. Ant. I would never really say aunt, it's just not really my style. Uh, caramel. There's an A there, so you can't really say caramel. This is root, although in certain contexts I'd say route, just kind of depends. Espresso, 10 out of 10 times. There's no X there, so you can't say espresso. This is data. Data is a bit pretentious. I don't really like people who say that. Uh, pajamas, not sure what the alternative is there. This is GIF, not GIF, because GIF would be with the J. Syrup, I know that Canadians say syrup, but I'm American. Uh, this is crayon. Again, not sure what the alternative is here. I say either or either, ironically. Uh, pecan, if I'm feeling fancy, otherwise pecan. And then finally, drawer, which I've had a real big struggle with saying because I have like a New Jersey accent. But what do you guys think? This is how much you should tip each of these people. So waiters and waitresses, if they do a good job, you can go 20 to 25%, but generally 15 to 18 is acceptable. 
Aaron Nail Salon, obviously depending on the specific service, but I think 20 to 25% is safe here too. So if you have like a $50 haircut, you should probably give them like 10 bucks. Rideshare or taxis. So I just found out that a lot of people don't tip their Uber or Lyft drivers, but I usually give maybe like 10% or like a flat five to $10, depending on the distance. Food delivery. Always tip your food delivery drivers at least $3. And if it's like a big meal, give like 15% or so I'd say. And if it's bad weather, throw them in like an extra five bucks. Pickup on the other hand, you should leave like no tip unless they're putting together some massive order. And then lastly, bartenders. She got about like a dollar a drink, I think, maybe $2 if it's like a high effort cocktail. But what do you guys think? Here are the most overrated TV shows of all time. So first up, we have Friends. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's overhyped. It's super redundant, the acting's horrible, and I've never actually laughed while watching it. People act like it's the next coming of Christ when it's mid at best. Uh, Rick and Morty. I've only ever watched five minutes of this, but I'm basing this solely off of the insufferable fan base who acts like it's this like super high IQ show. Just too much gatekeeping for me. Big Bang Theory, okay, arguably the least funny show I've ever watched. The laugh track's like 90% of the show. And then I think Sheldon's the worst TV protagonist in the history of media. Then they make that spin-off too, like Baby Sheldon or whatever it's called, and it's terrible. Uh, South Park, just super dumb and annoying. I feel like it's overstayed its welcome too. Same thing with The Simpsons, probably should have been done in like 2010. And then finally, JoJo's. No, I'm just kidding. Let's see if you're a picky eater. So we're gonna look at 10 of the most hated foods and if you refuse to eat more than half of them, then nobody likes cooking for you. Mayo's mid, but I'll eat it. The media killed Brussels sprouts. They're actually so good. I guess I would eat it, but milk chocolate is far superior. Tofu? No, I don't really eat like soy-based foods. I don't wanna get boobs. How do people hate sushi? It's godsend. Love that. I enjoy blue cheese, especially the dressing. Cilantro is good. You gotta grow up. It doesn't taste like soap. Uh, that's a durian. Yeah, I've never had one, but I heard they smell, right? Escargot is fine. No issues with snails. No. I hate the texture and taste of cottage cheese. Same with cream cheese. And finally, tomatoes. One of my favorite fruits. These are the most annoying people in the world, so let's see how many annoy us. Yes? I don't know why. I think I've just been conditioned to. Maybe like her joke stealing and personality. I know this is unpopular, but yes. I think he manipulates markets, but he still does a lot of cool stuff. No, not really. I think he's entertaining. He just plays like a villain role. Yes, for sure, but still goaded. Duck? No, I actually like him. People just hate rich people. I do, but I know he didn't do anything to me, so not sure why Lynn annoys me. Same with her. I think it's just like Hollywood rumors, maybe. He's always been annoying. He's just a meme at this point. Oh yeah, probably the most out of everyone so far. Do you know bro code? Well, let's find out. And for the record, I think bro code is so dumb, but we're going to take this anyways. Would you tell his girlfriend if your boy cheated? I would think of him less, but no, I don't think so unless provoked. That's between them. And let's be real, that relationship isn't lasting anyways. Would you rather hang out with your girlfriend or your friends? Girlfriend. Situational, but girlfriend. Would you ever wear pink? What? Yeah, that's like one of my favorite colors. Would you split popcorn with your boys at the movies? Hell yeah, I'm not eating a full bucket by myself, as long as we don't put butter on it, because that's nasty. Would you let yourself cry? I cry at the end of every movie and anime that I've ever watched, so yeah. And finally, would you pee next to your boys? I made a whole video on the urinal test, but no, I'd probably opt for the stall. These are the most overrated movies of all time. So I just wanted to rip the band-aid off early and say Star Wars. I find the movies themselves pretty boring, especially the newer ones. Just a lot of abandoned storylines and I'm just not heavily invested in the characters, and I think the fandom kind of carries. Avatar, yeah, so the special effects were groundbreaking, but the plot is extremely subpar, so it just aged horribly. And it's the highest grossing movie of all time, so naturally gonna be a little overrated. Titanic, so pretty similar reasoning to Avatar. Maybe I just dislike James Cameron. Boss Baby. Really not that funny and just pretty annoying to watch. I get I'm not the target demographic, but it literally was nominated for an Oscar. The Hangover, just like extremely low hanging fruit humor. And then it got like two sequels, which it didn't deserve. And finally, Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah, I mean, the entire movie was fan service and there was too many like convenient plot holes that just helped aid it a lot. So what do you guys think? Let's see what you guys call these six things. And it's gonna differ depending on where you live, but honestly, it doesn't matter because there's only one right answer anyways. So here we go. 
All right, so these are definitely sneakers. They're not tennis shoes because you could do much more than play tennis, and trainers, I've never even heard of that. Okay, so I'm a little split here. So I call this a sub, but it's a hoagie if I get it from Wawa, and it's never a hero. That's soda. Pop, I know they say that in like the south of the US. Soft drinks is just like, why are you being so official? That's a lollipop. Tongue slap is, I don't know who says tongue slap, but I'm probably gonna adopt that now. Sucker, yeah, that just, that's weird. Oh, that's a circle. I think Europe calls it a roundabout. I don't know who's calling it a rotary. I like circle, it's colloquial, it's cool. And then finally, uh, friends. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I call that a trash can. I could call it a garbage can too. It's not a bin, I know the UK says that, but what do you guys think? Here's a test to see if you're an adult. So we're gonna look at a few different foods and if you eat most of them, then you have the palate of an adult. Otherwise, you're probably still a kid. So here we go. The first up, we have dark chocolate. I mean, if dark chocolate's on this list, I'm gonna be qualified as an infant because I literally hate dark chocolate. It's so bitter. I'm a mammal, I need some milk. Now we have black coffee. I don't drink coffee, so I don't really have an opinion on this. I guess if I did drink coffee though, I'd omit like all the extra sugar, so I'd probably take it black. Sourdough bread, do people really not eat this? It's so good. If you've never had this, I highly recommend like switching out white bread during like a grilled cheese and using sourdough bread. It's life changing. Anchovies. All right, so recently I was in Italy, like in September, and I had it for the first time, and it's actually really good. A bit salty though. Red wine. This is exclusively what I drink now. When I drink, I only have red wine. Really good. And then finally, black licorice. Oh my gosh, absolutely disgusting. If you eat black licorice, then you should probably rethink everything you've ever done in your life. But how'd you guys do? Only a true burger lover is able to guess these fast food burgers from their pictures, so let's do this. I'm not really a huge burger guy. I know that's a Big Mac, of course, from McDonald's. I used to eat them a lot. That's a Whopper. Whoppers are kind of sad. Burger King, cool. All right, so you just have to name the establishment. Five Guys, that's my favorite burger. That's the best by far. Forget like in and out and stuff. Okay, so we're going chicken sandwiches. That's Chick-fil-A. Cool. Yeah, some people call chicken sandwiches burgers, I guess. That's Shake Shack. Wow, I guess I know a lot of these. Probably because I lived in New York for a bit. What is that? Three burgers? That's kind of crazy. Wendy's, yeah, makes sense. Another chicken sandwich. That's KFC? Wow, okay. Oh my god, that's the saddest burger I've ever seen. <laughs> what is that? Dairy Queen. Yeah, well, that makes sense. There's a good chance you're susceptible to being brainwashed, whether you consciously realize it or not. And so to test this, I'm going to tell you a quick story and then ask you a question at the end. So a king and queen lived in a beautiful castle with their five children, all of which were boys. One day, the kids were running around going in and out of the house when these cows all of a sudden started to attack the kids. Not only that, they were smashing into the white walls of the castle and getting pretty aggressive. The king was eventually able to contact the old man who had a farm down the road where the cows were from, and he quickly came over to rally them up, shackle them, and take them home. Nobody had an idea what had just happened, but they tried to shake it off and ended up just proceeding with their day. They then sat down for dinner, and what do you think they ate? Burgers, pizza, tacos, or seafood? Take a random guess. Well, if you said burgers, you're probably susceptible to subliminal brainwashing because I made 12 different references to burgers throughout that story and thus possibly condition your brain to choose that. Here are the most overrated landmarks in the world. So first we have Times Square. I think it's really cool to see once with the billboards and how crowded it is, but literally after 15 minutes you'll realize why every single New Yorker avoids it. You're better off going to Central Park or like downtown New York. Mount Rushmore, so conceptually this is crazy, right? Like carving four faces into a mountain, but it's like barely visible from the viewpoint and it's in the middle of South Dakota, so unless you're in South Dakota, really not worth the trip. Mona Lisa, actually the most overrated thing in the history of mankind. It's so small and the area to see it is like super packed with tourists and literally every other art piece in the Louvre is more impressive. I hate the Mona Lisa. Stonehenge, so one of those things that looks better on Google Images, and they don't let you get super close to it, so just pretty unimpressive when you see it live. Also, the pyramids were built around the same time, so really not that impressive. And then Plymouth Rock, it's literally just a rock in the canopy. 